as your teacher told you you're good for nothing, you won't amount to Glory anything, to and God. now you are 50 years, but Glory you're still weeping and wimpy yes. because of what somebody told you. Hey, look if you're born mirror. again, <laughs> look in the mirror. You are a child of God, and God is your mirror, and God is your father, and the image you see on the other side of the mirror is God mm. and God in you. you. Big. The big God, big on the inside of you. <laughs> it's a high five moment. Glory to God. My prayers for you are full of praise to God as I give him thanks for you with great joy. I'm so grateful for our union and our enduring partnership that began the first time I presented to you the gospel. I pray with great faith for you because I'm fully convinced that the one who began this gracious work in you will faithfully continue the process of maturing you until the unveiling of our Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always, in every prayer of mine, making request for you all with joy, for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Hello, I'm Pastor Nkechi Ene, and it's always my pleasure to welcome you to every single episode on Fresh Dew. Today on Fresh Dew, I have with me again, Pastor Shola Kim Mali. Pastor Shola is the Associate Pastor of the Carpenters Church. And for the last 11 episodes, yep. we've been taking the series, God, God is, is Big, big in, in me. me. And let's just jump right into it. So our review, um, we've, been, we've been looking at God is Big in me, but we started by looking at God is Big, and we found out many interesting things which we can't go into right now. And the word big, we said, means of considerable size or extent, larger than others of the same kind, of considerable importance or seriousness, generous. And we found out that when we say God is big in me, the me there refers to the believer. But the believer enjoys the bigness of God originally, just positionally. But we want to find out how can the believer enjoy the bigness of God experientially. Mm. And we said there has to be a bridge that is built between the positional and the experiential. The first perspective we looked at was Christ who came in the flesh mm. to show us the bigness of God in so many ways. And last week we began to look at another perspective, which is me, that is you, mm. the believer. What do you have to do? And we began to see that man is a tripartite being. Yeah. He's made up of spirit, soul, and body. And we know the soul, which is the mind, which is the center middle part, is really what then determines how much of the bigness of God you embrace or mm. how much of the bigness of God you resist and you enjoy in in your life. So that's really a very quick summary of um, what we've done so far. We'll jump right into it. Yeah. So that process uh, through which the believer embraces the bigness of God in his soul, in mm -hmm. his mind. Remember, the soul is a mind, will, and emotions. Mm -hmm. But if you, so, if you want to say so, the chief player in the soul really is the mind. mind yeah. And so the process through which the soul or the mind becomes adjusted so that it can experience the bigness of God is what we call, what the scripture calls the renewing of the mind, Amen. the renewal of the mind. And this subject, this truth is very, very important because success or failure, victory or defeat, and the general experience of the child of God rise or fall to that level mm. of the renewal of the mind. I think I should say that again. I think you should say that again. Yes. yes. Success or failure, mm -hmm. victory or defeat, and the general experience of the child of God is determined by 
the level of the renewal of the mind. So, so after you get born again, this is the next most the important very, thing. You get born again, of course, following the scriptural pattern, you get immediately baptized, filled with the Holy Spirit, and then the Holy Spirit begins to teach you the Word of God. It's almost like you're in a new school. Mm. You have a syllabus, you mm. have a curriculum, mm. the Word of God, mm. and then the Holy Spirit begins to teach you the Word because He's our teacher. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. It says, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Notice that. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. There's just so much in this verse. But what we're focusing on is the word transformed. Mm. We're talking about being transformed by the renewing of your mind. Let's pick up on that word transformed. That word transformed comes from the Greek word metamorpho, all right? And uh, even by pronouncing it, you may have an idea mm. of the word that uh, is anglicized from mm. that we have in our English words. So we have our English words, metamorphose and metamorphosis mm. are derived from the Greek word metamorpho. metamorpho. Okay, and what does the word mean? The word simply means to change to another form, to transfigure, to change or to transfigure. For those of you who remember by the story of the transfiguration, where Jesus was transfigured, it's the same word. Now, what is interesting about this word is that it refers to the process of transformation from an immature form to an adult form in distinct stages. Let's say that again. Okay. Metamorphosis refers to the process of transformation mm -hmm. from an immature form to an adult form in distinct stages. So what Paul is saying is that by the process of the renewal of your mind, you get transformed from a from an immature state, baby a baby Christian awesome. state, you know, to experience the uh, greatness of God as you are transformed. And notice transformed is an ongoing process. Mm -hmm. This is not something that happens once. Mm -hmm. So really for the child of God, the extent to which you will experience the bigness of God is hinged upon this principle the right extent here. to which you are transformed. You're transformed by the renewal of, of your mind. mind. And it has to be an ongoing process because this is right here is the, is the principle of growth for the Christian life. If your mind is not being renewed, let's say the way it is, you're not really growing mm. as a Christian. That is why somebody is born again mm. uh, five years, but they're still manifesting immature Immaturity. traits. They have not gotten rid of what I want to call baby fat. If, you know, when a child is born, there's that chubby thing mm -hmm. that hasn't mm -hmm. developed. Mm -hmm. A lot of Christians, unfortunately, if God could open our eyes, perhaps that's what would be seen in the spirit. People have been saved for five years, for 10 years. The fact that you have, been, you have chronological years in between the time you got saved till now does not mean that those chronological years match up with your state of growth. It's like what we were saying last week when we, yeah. we, we, we crash landed the episode. We're talking about <laughs> the, we were talking, uh, yeah, the, the kind of the mind, kind, Roman, yeah, yes. you live according to the, to flesh. the flesh. Great. You're carnally minded. Right. You set your mind, mind on the things of the That's flesh. That's right. A carnal Christian could be 10 years old. That's fine. But you're a carnal Christian and a newborn babe, many times there's really no difference. Yeah, that's good. Because you've set your mind on the things of the mm -hmm. flesh. So you live according, according to the to flesh. That, you act yeah. like a baby who poopoos all over the right. place and dribbles food. Right. And you, know, and you say, where's my bottle? You didn't give me throwing my... Throwing tantrums. Throwing tantrums. You see believers who are 10, 15 years old in the faith mm. throwing tantrums yeah. when things don't go their way. Yeah. That's the carnal mind. Yeah. And that's the person, from what you're saying, yeah. who hasn't taken time to begin to renew his mind. Yes. Get that transformation. transformation. Yes, get that transformation mm. going. Because when we get born again, remember what we said last time, your spirit is saved, mm. your soul is not saved. It's being saved. It's being saved. It's mm. meant to commence that process. Mm. But you see, so as you begin to commence that process, your mind transits from a carnal mind to a spiritual mind. Set your mind, mind on the things, on the of, things God. of God. And it is in that state that you can manifest the bigness of God. And the maturity. You, through the maturity uh, and all of that. So okay. interestingly, you know, this word metamorphosis, we speak of it in science to refer to the growth states, stages, egg, uh, pupae, lava. Is, is, is that lava pupae? I know you. 
We discussed this earlier. Egg lava poop. No biology should get upset here. <laughs> I think it's egg lava poop. It's egg poop. I lava. I think yeah. it's egg lava poop. Egg lava, like, oh, whatever. There's so a lava and there's a poop. poop. <laughs> <laughs> and so, the important thing is that the imago is at the, the end. Imago. So we all see the beautiful <laughs> butterfly at the uh, 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 going around, and we love that. But that butterfly started from a process. Amen. So we can say for our study that that beautiful butterfly flying around is God demonstrating, expressing the bigness of God. But where does it start? It starts with a decision to renew your mind. Ephesians 4, 22 to 24, that you put off concerning the former conduct, your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, verse 23, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. There we have it again, be renewed. Verse 24, and that you put on the new man, which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. So again, it's talking about the renewing of the mind. The essence of your mind. Exactly. The core, the, mm. be renewed in the spirit of your mind. What makes your mind work the way it works? Change that, because if you change that, then there'll be change in your life. So in other words, sorry, I, I know you want to move on, but I just yeah. want to you know, say this. I'm just simply asking this question. When then does the renewal of the mind end for the believer? Well, it, it, when he stops, when he stops breathing. breathing, when he leaves this So as this long earth, as you're on this earth, earth, the renewal of the mind continues for the believers. Yes, yeah. And look at something you just, you just read, and I saw that in, in verse 22. Yeah. It says, you put off. That's good. So it's a conscious decision. That's true. You put off. Verse 24, yeah. you put you on. You put on. Amen. So no pastor is going to do it for you. Good. God is not going to do it yeah. for you. Your spouse is not... You, child of God, the way you got born again, mm. you put off. Your it, responsibility. Your responsibility. And it goes on to say here, concerning your former conduct. conduct. And let me say this. For every believer, there should be former conduct. Amen. As your mind is being renewed, you should have a testimony mm -hmm. that there were things I used, used to, to do, do. that I'm good. not doing anymore. That's good. There's, there's a way I used to speak that I don't speak anymore. Mm. There's a way I used to think. If you are a believer, you're mm. born again. And you have no former conduct. That's good. And your conduct before salvation and your conduct after, after. salvation and after a while yeah, of taking the milk of the word and taking the meat that's of the word. And you cannot say there is a former conduct. If you don't have that testimony, then you're not growing. That's true. And if you're not growing, then you're dying. True. Really, you're stagnating and eventually you're dying. Mm. So there's a former conduct that belongs to the old man. Life. And the renewal of the mind is you making mm. a decision to mm. put off. The that old, form of conduct, yeah, glory be to God, and, put, and on. put on. Yeah. So you don't stay naked. True. You put <laughs> off, good. and you put, put on. on. Yeah. You put off, and you put on. Yeah. That's really what we're learning. Mm. Glory, yeah. this is good. It's good. Amen. This is good. Yeah. So in exploring this concept of the renewal of the mind, I mean, this is this is a subject that we can even, I mean, one can just pack on and just study. Take some episodes here. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> but we, we 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 want to touch on two concepts or principles that will help us understand how important it is for us to renew our minds and how we can see God who is big expressed in us and therefore experiencing in our lives because we're saying in effect that until your mind undergoes this transformation until your mind is renewed you will not experience the bigness of God mm. the extent to which you'll experience the bigness of God is the degree to which you renew your mind simple. it's that simple there that's, are no, that's a limiting factor that's the limiting factor there are no there are no uh, tricks or anywhere this is the principle of the word of God but if it's a limiting factor it also means that it determines how far you can go exactly so you cannot it's, say there's somebody in my village who oh, made me no, not no, 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 who no. made me not uh, make progress christians so many christians are just lazy when it comes to spiritual, spiritual responsibility say it again they are so lazy when it comes to christian re uh, spiritual responsibility it's easy to lay i mean to push the buck it's my grandmother it's this person who it's swore for me it's the devil man like i, I said <laughs> once god and the devil get blamed the most yeah i mean god for for things you know, that people blame, uh, uh, say God did things the devil did. Indeed. And then for Christians, the things they did they due to the their devil. flesh or not renewing their mind, like you just said, yeah. uh, former conduct, yeah. they blame it on the devil. Yeah. But the de you want to know where the devil's address is? He's under, under your, your feet, feet as a child of God. You have authority over him. Yeah. So stop saying, no, it's my besetting sin. It's my pet sin. For how long? Long. For how long? True. If you're growing, if your mind is being renewed, there will be a former conduct and there will be a Glory new be conduct. Yeah. Glory to God. So you cannot say right. that there's anything responsible for your not making progress. No, no, there's no. There's anything no. responsible no, for no. your not enjoying the bigness of right. God. 
the, the key is in your hands. Yeah. That's what we're learning here. Yeah. With the renewal of the mind, the extent to which you allow transformation Amen. is the extent to which you will Enjoy. experience the bigness of Amen. God. That means there is nothing that yeah. can stand against yeah. you That's right. if you consistently make up your mind to renew That's you make up your mind yeah. to renew your mind. That's, that just, <laughs> that's just <laughs> it. Be the yeah. So there are two uh, principles, principles said, I want yes. to look at. The first one is what we call the mirror principle. The mirror principle. And what does this principle say? state we can put it this way you cannot act beyond what you behold and it is what you behold that you become or experience i want to say that again please say it the again the mirror principle okay, write it write it down yes <laughs> simply goes thus you cannot act beyond what you behold or what you see mm -hmm. and it is what you behold or see that you become or experience that is so simple it's, but it's so profound and the ramifications are far reaching. One more time. More time. Yes, one you more cannot time. act beyond what, what you, you behold. behold or what you see. Mm -hmm. And it is what you behold or see that, that you, you become, become or you experience. So in your I life. cannot act beyond, beyond what, what I behold. Exactly. And it is what I, I Kechi, what I behold. I Shola. I yeah. behold or see Great. that I will become, become or what or I will experience. experience. Yeah. And if you experience, if something comes to you that you say, oh, but this only touches on what I become or what I experience. What if something comes to me? Well, if it comes to you, you can apply this self-same principle and change it yes. and push it back. Yes. I mean, you don't have a guarantee that things will not come against you, but you can determine your response yes. to them. By what you by, behold. By what brilliant. Amen. Watch Amen. That's the mirror principle. That's the mirror principle. And 2 Corinthians 3.18 captures this principle. This is where we get it from. 2 mm -hmm. Corinthians 3.18. What a lovely verse. But we all, speaking about believers, remember it is the believer that God is big in. Mm -hmm. We all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord <laughs> are being transformed. That's our word metamorphic again. again. Being transformed into the same image from glory to glory just as by the spirit of the lord we're now, parking here yeah that's that this is the point where you say wow wow uh, just some of those verses yeah, that you just, come out you just have to oh, breathtaking is <laughs> wow so we're looking at this principle the mirror principle first of all when we're talking about the mirror you need to understand here that the mirror is the word of god the mirror is the word of God. And why is the word of God given to us? The word of God is not a genie. The word of God is not a charm. It's not something you put under your, your bed, pillow. You, your pillow. Mm -hmm. You don't open it to some, some magical purported psalm, put it on your... No, no. The word of God is given to us for several reasons. One of the reasons is that it's given to us to, for us to behold how we look like in the sight of God, how God looks at us, and so that we can see God, God himself. himself, and that God is Christ in us. Mm. And as we see him, our experiences can now take the appearance of what we behold. Same image. The same image. The same image. Mm. Okay? A verse that goes right along so with this. So you cannot experience the bigness of God mm. without a, a romance, an addiction to, to the, the word, word of God. God. It's impossible. That's it's where impossible. you talk about spiritual laziness. Right, yeah. Believers who don't read, read yeah. believers yeah. who don't read their Bibles, yeah. believers who don't meditate on the Word yeah. of God, but they want to have quick fixes. You know, and, 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 and our technologically advanced society now, making things... Has encouraged that has laziness. Has encouraged, yes. True. And now people, God, I mean, the, before people would pick their Bibles, but now everything is on a phone, is on a tablet. Well, and if, it takes, if, it which takes, is fine if you're reading it. Oh, but of course your data is on and then here comes Emails are dropping in, Snapchat is Snapchat, dropping in, uh, FaceTime face is ringing. Uh, and uh, WhatsApp. Interrupting oh, the Bible. I mean, like, like, like that picture. And from there you go on a channel, you go on an alley. And you what and you forgotten what you, what, what, you are what you are looking at. So the word of God is the mirror given to us so that we can see God, Christ in us, and so that we can see ourselves in him. The only place you can find how you look like 
is in the word of God. <laughs> Say that again. The only place that you can find how you look like. How you really look how like. How you really look like is the word of God. Many of us have taken the reports of parents, reports of doctors, Education. lawyers, teachers. Your teacher told you you're good for nothing. You won't amount to anything. Glory be to God. And now you are 50 years, but Glory you're still weeping and wimpy yeah. because of what somebody told you. Hey, look if you're born mirror. again, look in the <laughs> mirror. You are a child of God and God is your mirror and God is your father and the image you see on the other side of the mirror is God mm. and God in you. you. Big. The big God, big on the inside of you. <laughs> it's a high five moment. Glory to God. Amen. Look, 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 look at something you, 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 you said here. Right. Which, you know, it says we all with unveiled face. Yes, open. So you see, the, the scripture is careful. Right. So every word in the Bible is there for a reason. Certainly. Because just I said, we all look mm. in the mirror. Right. But okay. it says, look, you've got to look in the mirror with an unveiled mm. face. That's good. So it means you cannot have a shield mm. over you. Mm. Veil the, of religion. Religion. Tradition. Tradition. Good. Fear. Good. Stubbornness. Good. Oh, goodness me. Have you seen stubborn believers? Oh, Lord. This is the way I've always believed mm -hmm. it. And it's like a thick, opaque yep. cloth. Yep. And you come to church every day. Mm. You're hearing the undiluted mm. word of God. Mm. You're active. You've got messages playing. But you've got a, a veil. veil over you. That's good. It says the veil has got to be removed. Yep. The veil has got to be lifted. Mm. You've got to remove that veil. It says with unveiled face. Mm. So the renewal of the mind cannot even begin. That's good. That's good. If you don't make a decision. A decision. The, decision. Put off, put on. Yeah. And the truth is this. There are some veils. Listen, listen, listen. You don't even know are there until you start to romance with the word. They're more subtle. And the word subtle. begins to show you the mm. veil. Mm. And the word helps you make that decision mm. to remove the veil. Mm. And if you're yielded to the word, you remove the veil. Right. So it's almost like layers of mm. the veil. Mm. You remove what you initially mm. know and you continue to enjoy the word of God mm. and more and mm. more, but your face has got to be unveiled. Amen. And the Amen. more your face is unveiled, mm. the more you can behold in the mirror. And the, the better word of you God. see. Oosh. Amen. Glory be to God. Glory to God. Glory be to God. Glory James to God. 1, 23 to 24. Yeah. <laughs> I think if you're already at the end yeah. of time again, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's about half of what we thought we will cover today. Yeah. But it says, 23, 24. If anyone is a hearer of the word mm -hmm. and not a doer, he's like a man observing his natural face yeah. in a mirror. Lord. And he observes himself and goes away and mm -hmm. immediately forgets, forgets. What, what kind thing. of man he was. He forget, forgot that God was big in him. Because he didn't act on. Exactly so. He says he was just a, a hearer, hearer of the word. Of word. So, the, so the word of God, you come to church, mm. pastor is preaching, right. you're getting excited. Right. Yes, I'm the healed. Yes, I'm that. Mm. And then you leave there and you don't act like the healed. The symptom comes and you say, oh, oh no, I'm dying. No, I'm sick. I'm going, this is going to kill. kill this is what killed, killed grandma. My father. This yeah. is what killed mama. This is what killed yeah. daddy too. It's going yeah. to kill. Yeah. No, you forgot the manner of man you are. Which the word had shown you. Had shown you. <laughs> Glory to God. I'm out of time. <laughs> We're out of time. <laughs> Father, we thank oh, you. We just God. love you so mm. much, big Father, thank big you. God in us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you because I know revelation is happening for mm. your children. Mm. Thank you because I know explosion is taking place in their minds. Amen. And they're beginning to see that you are real. Mm. You're not just a figment of some religion. Mm -mm, mm -mm. You are real. Thank you, And Lord. you can be big, big. Thank in you, your Lord. children. Thank we you. give you praise, Lord. Glory to your name. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Huh. Thank you, Father. Blessed be God. Thank you, Father. Thank We're you, grateful. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you alive but not really living life? Do you know somewhere deep down that something needs to change in the course of your life? Does it feel like you have lost your way in life? Yet to others you seem to know your way. Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. Can you believe that somewhere on the inside of you? Do you believe it? He is the answer to every question and he loves you just the way you are. Today he's waiting for you with arms open wide and he wants you just the way you are. 
will you make a decision today to surrender your life to him and run into those outstretched arms? If you want to do that, say this prayer out loud, meaning it from the depth of your heart, and you will be saved. Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I believe you are the Son of God and that you died for me and rose again just to save me. Come into my heart and make me brand new as you have promised. I will live for you all the days of my life. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Congratulations on taking the most important decision of your life. You are now born again and a brand new person. It has all happened on the inside of you. Now you need to grow in your new faith. And what has happened on the inside will surely be reflected in your everyday life. We can help you grow in your new faith. Please call us at 0700 Fresh Dew or email us at saved at freshdew.tv and we'll be here for you. Romans 10, 17 says, So then, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You can order today's message and other past messages on our website store, freshdew.tv. It is available on MP3 and CD and also on MP4 and DVD just as seen on TV. Fresh Dew, giving you fresh inspiration and direction for your life. Thank you for watching Fresh Dew today with Pastor Nkichi Ene. We trust you were blessed by today's episode. For further information on Fresh Dew, please call us on 0700 Fresh Dew, which is 0700 3737 4339. If you're calling from outside Nigeria, the number will be plus 234 700 3737 4339. Our phones are open from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. GMT plus one. You can also send us an email to info at freshdew.tv and we'll be glad to serve you. We also invite you to like, follow and interact with us on our Twitter and Facebook pages at Fresh Dew TV and also on Pastor Nkechi's Facebook pages at Pastor Ketch. For more information on how you can partner with Fresh Dew and receive Pastor Nkechi's monthly letters and weekly MP3 gifts, please visit our website www.freshdew.tv Once again, thanks for being with us today and we look forward to seeing you next time on Fresh Dew to receive fresh inspiration and direction for your life.